We're here tasting the En Primeur 2011 wines together with Christian Moix. Christian, can you tell us a little bit uh, about the vintage 2011? Yes, it was a difficult vintage to produce. Um, of course, we were so spoiled with a fantastic trio 08, 09 and 10 uh, that we are uh, returning to the reality of Bordeaux, which means the weather is not always perfect. The weather would have been perfect except that uh, the timing of the weather, if I can say, was not right. Which means we had the summer uh, during the spring, uh, the fall during the summer, and the weather was okay uh, during picking. So it, it was uh, very delicate because, uh, as I said, having such a beautiful spring uh, meant that we had an early harvest, which is positive, meant that the bloom was perfect, almost too good, so potentially uh, the crop would have been too big. Uh, then we had some uh, heat waves uh, end of uh, June, end of August, uh, uh, with the consequence of some uh, sunburn. So altogether, the weather was not bad, but was not in the right timing, as I said, which means it was difficult, impossible to make a great vintage. The goal was to make a good vintage, and I think that's what many people achieved, uh, a vintage in the style probably of 07, without pretension, uh, a vintage for drinking, for being drunk younger, I hope at a more reasonable price, uh, so that it will be a wine for restaurants and for early drinking. Um, to achieve that goal, nevertheless, was not easy in that sense that you should not work against nature. Um, don't try on a vintage, a normal vintage like that, to over-extract and to try to hide uh, what I would call the non-perfection of the vintage. Things are what they are. We have not to be ashamed of things which are not under our uh, control, I would say, of course, happily so, the weather is not under our control. So, the good growers, what did they do? When they saw that the crop would be too big, uh, and we saw that by mid-June, we began to crop thin. Then when we got some sunburn, we, uh, we had to cut uh, the berries which were burnt. And at the, the end, when we picked by uh, mid-September, the optical sorting, for the top chateaus was a big plus because the uh, berries which were less than perfect were eliminated with that optical system which worked beautifully. Uh, I speak of the great chateaus. For the generics it, it may be more difficult honestly but for the best chateaus uh, with a huge effort which means a big cost it was possible to produce good wines not great wines. So let's, as an example, uh, if we taste Trotanois, which is clearly one of the best wines of Pomerol, uh, how does it show in 2011? Well, the color is very good. You know, we, as you know, I'm a producer of red wine, not of black wine. My, my purpose has never been to produce black wines, which means black wines are um, usually the, the result of over-extraction. It's a deep red. It's not bright, but it's, it's a beautiful red, so that's a plus. The fruit, I will not speak of black currant. It's rather a red fruit this year, raspberry, uh, why not strawberry, but it's a pleasant fruit. There is a, the vintage uh, as a vividness. It's lively, uh, which is the quality. Uh, it is not big, fat, rich, like uh, was the uh, Oten, for instance. But it's clean, fresh. So you will uh, hear a lot about the word freshness. 
which we could not apply for the two previous vintages. And freshness is good from time to time, let's put it. This sample shows beautifully a fair amount of tannin, which you see um, during the, after the testing, but at a good level, nice fruit. Again, it's not a deep wine, but there is a good equilibrium, uh, difficult to achieve in, uh, in uh, 11, but the wine is uh, typical of Pomerol, not very rich, but very pleasant. I, I, I think, honestly, that in three, four years, you, you, you will be able to drink that wine with enjoyment. I could drink it today, you see. It's pleasant. Easy to swallow. Good, free, good fruit. Not over-extracted. A good wine. Not a great wine. That's how I will summarize the vintage. <laughs>